Right, so what we're going to now is uh, what we call the big fridge. Um, as far as we're aware, this was the, the biggest um, dilution refrigerator with a demagnetization stage made. Um, and this, this came online in the middle of the 90s. Fantastic fridge, still going strong. Um, and this is working at the moment. Okay, so we're about to go into the ultra low temperature physics laboratory. Uh, the research group in here, um, the research takes three broad strands. Um, we develop and use cooling technology to access temperatures as close as we can get to absolute zero, uh, which is at minus 273.15 degrees centigrade. Okay, so at the moment there are uh, four research cryostats in the lab. This is the oldest one, um, which is still going strong after being built and brought online in the late 80s. It was refurbished a few years ago. Uh, we're just getting ready to cool this guy down. See a huge amount of electronics, computer control. The heart of the machine is deep inside this dewer, which the blue thing, which contains um, a vacuum space, then a space for liquid nitrogen at 77 Kelvin, then another vacuum space, then a bath full of liquid helium at 4 degrees above absolute zero, 4.2 Kelvin, then there's another vacuum inside that, and we stick what's called a dilution fridge inside there, and that's um, a fridge that works on a similar principle to the fridge you work at home, but the working material in this fridge is a mixture of helium-3 and helium-4, and then bolted on to the bottom of the dilution fridge are our experiments in what's called the nuclear demagnetization stage and the helium-3 that is then cooled by the copper cools to approximately 100 microkelvin. Um, these are the lowest temperature helium-3 experiments uh, worldwide and that's one of our unique selling points in this lab. So that's the screensaver and that's actually what his cell looks like deep inside the cryostat. And um, just to, if you can see, that's that's one millimeter graph paper. This whole thing is about um, two centimeters square. So all this cooling effort is to do an experiment that's on the order of a cubic centimeter. Right, we're effectively in the middle of a building site here. There used to be a cryostat where we're standing, but we removed. And now we're building a new cryostat. Um, which is almost finished, and this, this cryostat is specifically designed to cool devices um, on chip, nanoscale devices down to the lowest possible temperatures. It's actually an access facility um, funded by a collaborative project across the European Union. If you just go inside, you can see some of the things we do for cryostats that uh, are hidden usually. There's lots of games you have to play in low temperature physics. So you've got a fridge which has got cooling power, but the outside world is trying to heat it up all the time with heat leaks. And you can imagine it's a, it's a huge temperature difference between a few millionths of a degree and the 300 Kelvin of room temperature. So there's lots of heat sources that we have to be careful about. So when you come in, you'll see the room is tin. When the cryostat is actually in operation, it sits inside a, com a room that's completely sealed metal box and that's called a Faraday cage and that stops electromagnetic radiation getting inside the fridge. And you can see this huge support structure. This is 50 tonnes of concrete and lead with interleaving uh, vibration isolation material. When the cryostat is running, this whole 50 tonnes that supports the cryostat will lift up on air springs. And the idea, because any vibration equals heat, um, we've got a motorway, the M6, a few hundred yards that way. Big lorries going past there can cause enough vibration that you can see it in the experiments. The experiments are extremely sensitive. Okay, this is our big machine, which you've already seen because Rich Haley has shown it to you. Um, we make all these ourselves as you know and 
I think in this machine I can safely say that every solder joint from the top there you can see to the bottom down here and everything inside was made by me with my own fair hands. Inside here the important bit is, uh, is the dilution refrigerator which is a fancy term for a refrigerator which essentially works like a domestic machine. Now the tricky thing about this is that we cannot run mechanical devices at the low temperatures. If we could do that it would be fantastic but we have to run the pumps to circulate this stuff at room temperature so we have to bring the helium-3 in gas form out of the cryostat into a pump and then push it back in again to get the cycle to work. So we have warm helium-3 coming in and we have cold helium-3 going out and the tricky bit is to cool the incoming warm helium-3 with the outgoing cold helium-3 and to do that we use these little devices which are this is a, a heat exchanger and essentially what we have is a box there which will have the concentrated helium-3 flowing through it a little box here which will have the dilute helium-3 going through it and separating those two streams is a pad with with sintered silver on it we solder these two boxes together so now we have one liquid throwing through one way through that side and the other liquid thrown this way through the other side. Now if we just had a simple surface between those two there isn't enough surface area to make good thermal contact so this little pad here is sintered silver powder so this is silver powder which is about nanometer size sintered into a pad so in this little pad here we have many many square meters of surface area so the helium on this side makes contact with that through this large area and then on the other side there's a similar pad which makes contact with the other side and the trick of making these machines is to knowing how to make these devices and that's what we are good at doing in Lancaster so here you have a professor making things with his own fair hands which is not usual in this game they usually sit in their offices and do great thoughts with computers um, this is a helium liquefier facility. Um, this machine is a helium liquefier. All the helium that we, the liquid helium that we use in the in the department, it boils off, um, is recovered uh, by a system of pipes that thread the whole building, end up in a large gas bag which sits on that platform. Then that gas is compressed um, into cylinders which sit on the roof, and another compressor takes it from those cylinders, compresses it into the liquefier. The liquefier does what it says. It turns a gaseous helium into liquid helium at 4.2 Kelvin, four degrees of absolute zero. We use the helium in the transport used to put into our cryostats in the lab. That helium boils off, gets collected in the gas bag, and the whole cycle continues. So this is an experiment cell. Uh, that's what they look like inside, because this one has exploded. And, and been cannibalized for spare parts by other people. Um, that happens quite a lot. Um, this phase diagram of helium-3 is temperature dependent, magnetic field dependent, and pressure dependent. So we will pressurize these cells uh, up to around 30 atmospheres of pressure. Um, they're made from plastic, which behaves well at low temperatures, but doesn't always enjoy being pressurized. So sometimes the end of your experimental run comes when your cell goes pop. Um, and that's what's happened here. The poor thing has exploded.